Hey, hey you, yes you, see all these wonderful people right here? They are my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can afford to do my passion as a career and bring you guys weekly videos. Want to join them? For just $1 a month, you can get videos 24 hours before anyone else. And for even higher tiers, you can get Polaroids, letters, and mystery boxes from me to you. And even fursuit parts, not to mention my eternal thanks. So what are you waiting for? Become a Patreon today via the link in the description. Thanks again, enjoy the video. Hey everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be making a Drecubus. This is an original species that only has two fursuits that I know of to my knowledge, so we're going in blind here, but we will try our best. I've started with a bucket head base and a to scale sketch of the side view of the muzzle. You can find my bucket head tutorial on my channel. I cut two of the upper muzzle shape out of two inch foam and glued them together. You'll notice I cut it out again, and this is because my cut wasn't straight enough to use, so I recut the piece. I sketch out lines to kind of gauge how I want to carve it down. I use the official species guide for this to hopefully do the species justice. I decide to trace out the eye shape so I can better shape out the gaps for them on the muzzle. I'm going for a custom shape for these eyes so these will be scanned into the computer and 3D modeled ready to print. I use a lot of references for this. Now I'll trace the shape onto the head. Now begins the longest part of making a new species, and that's carving down the muzzle. I tend to find drekkies are short muzzled like duchies with a bit of goat mixed in. They're a unique muzzle shape, so it's really important I take the time to get it right. I add a small bit of centimetre thick foam on top of the muzzle to create a little bump there and to accentuate the nostrils when they are eventually patterned in. I now work on sketching out where the inside of the mouth will be as well as some more nose details.
I constantly refer to reference art in my original sketch to make sure the shape is right. I also carve out an area for the wearer's nose to sit. Now it's ready to glue on. I put on glue and wait for it to go a bit tacky so I don't have to wait too long for it to cool when I put it on the head. I send a photo for customer feedback and whilst I wait I work on the bottom jaw shape. You want it to be slightly shorter than you think so your character doesn't have an overbite. I carve this piece into the same bottom jaw shape I'd use for any other species. I make adjustments to the head as per customer's request. And I apply glue to the bottom jaw once again, waiting for it to go a bit tacky before attaching it to the base and start cleaning up our muzzle shape as much as possible. The great thing about working with foam is if you took too much off, you can always add it back. Next we pattern the cheeks using the eyes as a guide. I cut it out of the same foam thickness we used for the muzzle and begin the long process of carving it down. You want to make the bottom of the fork almost flat and the top of it fairly thick. You can glue it onto the head before you carve it down too if you'd rather work that way. I just find it easier to glue on this way. I now glue both cheeks onto the head and wait till dry.
I then work on connecting the cheeks to the muzzle. You may not have a gap, but I tend to have one after I glue the cheeks on, so a little bit of foam in these gaps fixes that issue. And of course, carve smooth. I decide my cheek jowls are a bit too deep, so fill them in with a bit of scrap foam. Excuse both the mess and the camera fuzz, I'm a messy worker and it's hard to keep things in focus over 8 hours of footage. I work on patterning the T-brow piece for the head and cut it out of 2 inch foam and split it down the middle to half the thickness. I glue this onto the head. You'll often see me carve as it's drying. This is just me being impatient and you can see that one side keeps coming off. Just be patient and wait for it to dry and you won't have this issue. I use pins to hold it down for a bit. If you do do this, make sure to remove them once they're dry. I work on carving the shape down and remove my pins. Then I fill in any gaps between the foam bits. I then use the leftover T piece to sketch some brows, glue them on and carve them down. Now, it's time for the main event, the ears. Drekkies have super long ears that come all the way down to their waists. This is an iconic feature of the species, so it's important that I get this right. I use paper to help me draft my pattern and I spend a lot of time on this to make sure I get the shape right. I continually test the fit and how they sit to make sure that I'm happy with it. I 
I decide that I hate this shape and I start again. The species has a little curve at the end of the ear so I'm making sure to accentuate that. I cannot describe how much I agonised over this ear shape. I use the new ear shape to guesstimate the bit I need to cut out from the base to get it to sit right. So I was the big dumb and forgot to hit record for this bit, but all I did was cut out the ear shape out of one centimeter thick foam and add a bit of EVA with this sticky outy bit on top. The EVA will stop the ear from drooping and hold it out from the head. The shape of the EVA can be up to you and how floppy you want your Drekkie ears to be. So now we work on gluing these bad boys on. A lot of glue is essential here. These things weigh quite a bit and in fursuit here terms, so we want to make sure we wait for it to dry fully before moving on. I immediately work on fleecing the ear in place by gluing a strip of the fabric around the base of the ear. This helps them not fall off, like, ever. So you'll notice this next ear has most of it missing. Since the pattern on this suit is symmetrical, I'll only be taping one of the ears. And once the pattern is off, I'll cut the other ear, the long ear to look like this as well, so that the ears are only fabric from about halfway down. They'll be floppy, but also hold, hold their shape. Or I hope so at least. I repeat the fleecing on the other ear. I stare at it for a while and decide I may hate how they're sitting and want them to sit a bit flatter on the head. So I run this by the customer and in the meantime start drafting the patterns for the horns.
and yep, I hate it, so off they come. I make adjustments to the shape and re-glue and fleece them back onto the head. I take my horn outline and trace and cut two of them from my two inch foam and start carving it to shape. I'm only making one of these as the horns will be stuffed and this foam work is solely for patterning purposes. You'll understand what I mean in probably about part three of this tutorial. I trace out a small part of the base of the horn and carve around like a cylinder. Like the ears, this will act as a supporting base for our horns. Now glue these onto the base. And the base is done and ready for lining. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a really fun species to carve. Put your questions in the comments below and I'll see you next week and in the next part of our Dracubus tutorial. Thanks for watching.